everyone my name is Evie Lupine welcome back to my channel and today I have another video for you all today we're gonna be talking about something that is super relevant to so many of the conversations that we have been having on this channel today we're gonna talk about how to spot a fake Dom and what I mean by that I should first clarify I don't mean like newer doms that are still trying to like find their feet in power exchange you might be like making some mistakes or don't really have any confidence yet when i say a fake dom i am not meaning it in a derogatory way towards a newer dominant i am specifically talking about people that on purpose and knowingly pretend to be a dominant when they really aren't in order to get something out of the relationship that they want for selfish reasons without any sort of intention of truly holding up their end of the bargain. Now, in this conversation, I am primarily going to be focused on situations that happen primarily through like online interactions, though there will be discussion of in-person interactions as well, simply because when I have heard stories about this, the majority of fake dom spotting scenarios tend to happen initially through online communication first. And noticing that right away can be a really, really big hit before you try and progress that into some kind of in-person sort of scenario, right? Also because of COVID, like, most of us aren't out here like meeting new partners at dungeons and parties anyways so even if we do meet people it is primarily going to be online dating websites fat life you know even twitter maybe that kind of thing so without further ado let's go ahead and get into our internet friendly numbered list where we discuss how you can spot a fake dom all right number one the biggest tell i think initially at the beginning of the conversation is do they open up the conversation with cake now if you are in certain groups on fetlife certain parts of twitter there are areas where it might be expected to role play fairly quickly in a conversation with somebody because those spaces are designed for fantasy and role play however even in those spaces generally there is some kind of rule or some kind of guidelines for how to act before you engage in that scenario right you like say hey my name's blah 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 are you interested in blank you know at least you pretend to have a conversation first so if somebody opens up a conversation with like a five paragraph essay about how they want to tie you up and like throw you into a dumpster like they are probably more interested just speaking frankly in jerking off than actually finding a true bdsm relationship so just because somebody is giving you attention just because they are sending you you know risque messages and saying like oh my god you're so hot i wish i could do xyz thing to you like that doesn't mean they're actually really interested in doing bdsm and honestly i would just consider anybody that does that to not really even know the basics of consent and just like not even put them under consideration for anything further than a delete or block or mute okay so the next one is very closely related to this number two is they talk about bdsm but they don't seem to know the lingo even if somebody doesn't open up the conversation with bdsm and you start talking to them and you do get into bdsm not as like a fantasy role play thing but as like a hey what are your interests what do you like to do what is your experience with pay attention to the way that they talk about doing bdsm because you know and this can be a sign of somebody with lack of experience it can also mean somebody that like doesn't care about not having experience and they're just trying to play a role to string you along right but pay attention because if somebody is truly experienced with bdsm they're probably not gonna say something like mm, i don't know like hey baby can't wait to rope you up instead of like using the normal language that we use to talk about doing things like shibari and bondage for example so see how they use the language they may use terms that exist in bdsm but not in the right ways they may not use correct phrasings they may not do just generally they just don't understand the lingo that isn't you know a stop no further conversation just because of that because it could be that the english isn't their first language it could be because they're just not that experienced and they're trying to just guess based off of what they know but 
if they are trying to put it out like, oh, I've been doing BDSM for 10 years, and they just talk and they have no idea what they're talking about, then, like, they're probably lying to you and they're probably trying to put on a front, so be very cautious with proceeding with anybody that seems to pretend like they know the lingo when they really don't. Number three is they will try to escalate the relationship quickly. If somebody can make it past the pitfalls of like knowing what BDSM terms are and not immediately sending you a rape fantasy, there's still quite a bit that you would need to watch out for. And even when you're online, things like sub frenzy can absolutely still be a thing. And somebody that has malicious intentions will take advantage of that to essentially gish gallop you into doing things that you may not truly be comfortable with. Be really cautious if you've been talking to somebody for like a couple of days, even a couple of weeks, and they are immediately trying to get into DS roles and titles and giving you rules and punishments and things of that variety. You know, be really cautious about that because somebody that is genuinely trying to develop a long-term DS dynamic is going to want to take that slow to really, really know what your interests are. Somebody that is just looking for a way to get nudes, for example, is going to try and get there as fast as possible. So really pay attention to the pace that they try and dictate for the relationship. And this isn't just with actions, it can also be with the way that you're having conversations. So a really clear hallmark of this is like six, 12 hour long continual conversations, Skype sessions, talking over Discord. And this could be because you just have a lot of free time and a lot to talk about. But again, people that have malicious intentions can use this as a way to wear down your defenses. Because when you are exhausted from talking for 12 hours straight, it is a lot easier to make you pliable, especially if you've been talking about like hot BDSM things, than you are at like, you know, half an hour into the conversation. So, you know, it's not necessarily a bad thing on its own to have a long conversation, but be wary if they try to use that to push your buttons, push your boundaries, and ask for things for you to do because of the fact that you've been talking for so long. Again, a good partner, a good dominant will respect you and will try to put you in the best situation for consent versus trying to wear down your boundaries as quickly as possible. Number four is they immediately emphasize the sexual nature of the relationship. Now, this was a problem because remember, we're not talking about real doms here. We're talking about fake doms. So BDSM is probably not even really what they're after. They maybe want some kind of fetish need met, but more likely than not, they simply want to have sexual access to somebody. They want somebody that will supply porn for them. And so they're not really caring all that much about BDSM. They're gonna use the lingo to get what they want, but Again, it's about the sexuality, and so usually right away, as soon as they can, they are going to want to start sexting. They're going to want to talk about sexual fantasies. They're going to want to share nudes. And even if they do use BDSM lingo, right, it's going to be focused on the sexual things. It's going to be focused on, like, let me pick out your panties. You know, the, the, like, what's the meme of, like, you know, I didn't get a picture from you, kitten. Daddy is angry. Like the, like that, I'm going to put it up on screen if I can find it, but like that meme, you know, it's that stereotype. And there's nothing wrong with having a sexually focused BDSM relationship. It's very common, especially online. But if that's not what you want, if you have made it clear, I am looking for a BDSM relationship that has these qualities and constant sexual interaction is not on that list. Be very cautious when somebody keeps trying to prioritize that over other aspects of your interactions that are maybe more fulfilling for you. Number five is they are not available to you. This is probably the one that I see the most commonly that is the biggest red flag. So really, really take this one seriously. With fake doms, they are not interested in maintaining a long-term connection with you. They are only interested in so long as they can keep getting a supply for their personal wink bank materials. So if they are escalating to the sexuality as quickly as possible, and then after they get there, they start to slowly taper off their communications and they only really come back when you're sending a nude and you're dirty texting them and you're doing all those things, pay attention to that because somebody who is interested in developing a true relationship is not only going to be around, 
when you send them nudes and especially when you've gotten to the point where maybe like sub frenzy has been exploited this pull and going back sort of dynamic where they're available and they're they they tell you everything you want to hear and then they pull back and they're not available that in and of itself can be an abuse tactic to get you to invest even further in the relationship because you were so desperate to maintain contact with them you were so desperate to please them and make them happy that you maybe are more willing to do things that you previously said no to because you want to be able to maintain their time and attention. So honestly, I really think, you know, no matter what, even if it's somebody that like is not truly a fake dom and is just like somebody that's like bad at having adult relationships, like you deserve to have a relationship where somebody pays attention to you, where somebody doesn't spend three days ignoring your calls and your messages. Like if you are clear and you say from a relationship, these are the things that I expect. I would like it if we could talk every day. If you're busy, if you're on vacation, if you're not gonna have internet, you know, let me know in advance. I can work around that. But if you are clear about your expectations and you tell them when it bothers you that they, you know, leave you unread, they don't respond to your messages and they keep doing it anyways, like they are just not interested in you enough. They, they, they may like that you do sexual things. They may like certain aspects of it, but they obviously don't care enough about you to meet your needs instead of just meeting their needs. So just don't even bother, don't waste your time. You are definitely worthy of having better things than somebody that ignores you for three, four, five days at a time. Just move on, don't waste your energy, find something better because it is out there. Number six is they expect you to put in all of the work. I think in the BDSM community, we have a little bit of a stereotype that like doms are supposed to be like, <laughs> reclined on a lounge being fed grapes and like they never have to lift a finger and it's always like the busy submissive like running around and doing everything for them but like genuine dominance is a lot of work you know practicing good communication skills it's taking time to plan out scenes check in with your partner cultivate your own skill set like being a dom is a lot of work even if you're not necessarily the one you know doing all the laundry and all the dishes but with fake doms they just simply cannot be bothered to really contribute more than they absolutely have to to maintain a relationship. So typically, what a fake dom will do is all of the rules, all the obligations, all the expectations will be on the submissive partner. If they basically act like a hypocrite and they tell you to, you know, send me pictures of your panties every day and you must respond to me anytime I message you within 10 minutes and you must do XYZ thing every single day and then they leave you unread for like three days in a row, like, that's not an equal relationship at all. You know, there is always going to be a power imbalance because it is a power exchange relationship, but they should at least respect you as an equal. And if they cannot respect your time as equals, then they really probably don't think that highly of you. And it's not worth wasting your time on somebody that is expecting you to be the one to give and give and give and give. And they absolutely exploit that sort of, I guess, stereotype in the community that submissives are supposed to be the ones that, you know, give up everything and just are happy with scraps in return. That is not the case. I'm here to tell you, that's not the case. You are worthy of a person that puts time and effort into the relationship. Maybe not like, exactly in the same way that you do, but in a way that maintains a healthy, ultimately balanced and mutually beneficial dynamic. Number seven, this is where we start getting into some of the darker aspects of interacting with a fake dom. This one is they try to isolate you. This is the one that we saw over and over again, for example, with Marilyn Manson, even with Army Hammer. The best way to maintain an abusive controlling dynamic is to make sure the other person doesn't have any way to get outside help to have anybody call attention to the situation. So by telling you that you're not allowed to talk to your male friends without permission, that you can't talk to anybody else without their permission, that you can't talk to your family because they don't understand your BDSM dynamic. Generally speaking, that doesn't have good intentions behind it. I don't know. Maybe an exception would be that, you know, you have a really toxic friendship with somebody and they recognize that and like a good genuine dom would be like, hey, you know, I recognize that this friend you have is really hurting you. Maybe you should take some time away from that friendship and really evaluate whether or not you wanna maintain that connection. That might be a possibility, but generally speaking, 
if they have bad intentions, if they just don't care about you, they're going to try and isolate you because it's easier to maintain control over you when you don't have any other social connections. When they are your only outlet for BDSM, for people that understand the lifestyle, for just communication and camaraderie and friendship in general, it is going to be so much easier to manipulate you into doing things for them because you don't want to lose your one and only. You don't want to lose the only person that will ever understand you. And especially if they're feeding you lines like that, like, I'm the only person who's ever really going to love you because you're such a freak. Like, people say these things. I'm not making this up. I've seen it. It's... It's a thing that people do. So just be aware if somebody is trying to isolate you, that's not a BDSM thing. That's not a power exchange thing. That is them trying to control your life in a negative way. And really, really be cautious if somebody is trying to take your relationship in that direction. All right, number eight is an oldie but a goodie. <laughs> it is somebody that doesn't believe in safe words or consent or aftercare. <sighs> you think people would be aware that people know this is like a bullshit thing to do, but it still happens. There are a lot of people who will tell you, especially if you are a younger, inexperienced submissive, that real submissives don't use safe words. Real submissives don't need aftercare. Real submissives blah blah blah. Just real submissives blank. Let me tell you right now, anything that starts with real submissives, pretty much anything, it's not going to be true. There are edge cases. I know people, you know, personally myself even, there are scenes where I don't need aftercare. There are individual people, there are certain scenes where I choose to not use safe words. I've been doing BDSM for over six years now at this point. I have lots of experience with different partners, different scene types, lots of different things. So I know what I need mentally, emotionally, physically to make particular scenes work for me. It shouldn't be taken as like a blanket excuse for like, oh, well, you know, safe words really take away the dom's power in a scene. So if you have safe words, you're not really experiencing true submission. Or if somebody says like, well, if you need aftercare, you're just a big baby. I don't think you're really cut out for this tough, brutal lifestyle. Like, okay. Okay then, uh, I'm gonna tell you that's all bullshit. If you want safe words, if you want aftercare, if you want all that stuff, you are absolutely allowed to do it. And typically, the kinds of reasons for why people want to take these things away is again to have more power and control over you, to make it harder for you to say no, and to make it harder for you to leave, or to even recognize that what's happening to you is abusive, or that you're dealing with somebody that is not genuinely interested in BDSM, your safety, or what you actually enjoy about doing kink. So number nine is they don't like the real life BDSM community. Now, I am specifically saying here, they don't like the BDSM community, not necessarily that they can't participate in the local community. There could be lots of very valid reasons for n not participating in the local community, right? Maybe one doesn't exist. Maybe it's ran by like a rapist asshole. Maybe it's ran by a racist. Maybe it's not friendly to queer people. Maybe it's way too expensive. Maybe it doesn't work with their work schedule. Like there are lots of reasons why people cannot or choose not to be part of a local BDSM community. However, if somebody, again, as a blanket statement, is like, I don't like the kink community because those dungeon monitors try to pretend like they know what's best. I hate all the rules that they have. Like, that's a big red flag, sir. I I'm gonna say no to that. If somebody doesn't want to participate in the local community because there's too many rules and they try to like control your kink too much, I, that just, not, I'm not comfortable with that. I'm not comfortable with that. Personally, I think if you are a new person in the BDSM scene, if you are doing, especially a scene with somebody you've never met before, doing it at a public play event is the safest way to do it because people forget this. This is like basic 90s internet safety. You do not know who the fuck somebody is when you have met them online. If they want to meet with you in a private place to do BDSM the first time you've ever met them, you know, I don't want to raise any alarm bells here. They could be a murderer. They could have horrible intentions for you. And this is how people die doing BDSM. I am so, I am stone cold serious right now. This is how people die doing BDSM is meeting up with strangers in private locations where they cannot get help. 
So do not put yourself in that situation. If somebody says, oh, I can never do a scene at a dungeon because they have too many rules or whatever, or, you know, a million other things, they could be blacklisted, they could have been banned from their local community because they are a known abuser. And if you know what their local community is, it is worth checking in with them to say, hey, you know, do you know of this person? Have they been banned? Because you might be surprised, it could turn out the reason they don't like the local kink community is because they got blacklisted two years ago for somebody calling red during a scene and then they kept playing. And you probably don't want to be a repeat experience of that. So keep your safety in mind. There are valid reasons for not wanting to participate in a dungeon. If it's because they have rules, that is a bullshit reason. All right, number 10 is they are not honest with you. Honesty is key in any relationship, but especially in BDSM. And typically when somebody's a fake Dom and they're putting on a persona, they are going to tell you lies at some point. It could be their age, their location, their experience with BDSM. And it can be really hard to know when somebody's lying to you because the best liars are the least likely to be caught. But if somebody says, you know, initially that they're 24 and then later you find out that they're really 30, like that probably just wasn't a typo, right? They probably were waiting to tell you what their real age was because they knew that if they said the truth, you were probably not going to continue giving them what they wanted. So really, really pay close attention to when they tell you things, how consistent they are, and how honest they are with things. And especially if they're really like dodgy about certain subjects, if they are, are really just kind of trying to conceal things and downplay things. And this could definitely also include things like, for example, are your conversations and photos private? Is it just between the two of you? Are they pursuing any other submissives, right? Or do they have a string of them that they're talking to? If they cannot be honest about whether or not they intend to be monogamous or how they intend to use the photos that you share with them, if they respect your privacy or not. And I think at minimum, the best way to make sure that this stays in a good place is to have an expectation of mutual transparency, especially if they have any rules for you about like sharing passwords or the things that I covered in a video that actually will either be out right before this one or after this one, I'm gonna spend a lot of time talking about privacy. If they cannot agree to a mutual level of transparency and they try to make excuses about that, that's a big red flag, right? Because that probably means they're trying to hide something from you if they have the expectation that you would do that for them. We got one last one to talk about here, number 11, which is they don't care about your experience or preferences or they care way too much. So this one is a little bit complicated, but essentially what it is, is either a fake dom will basically never ask you about your previous experience, what you actually like doing in BDSM, your limits, your boundaries, whatever. They're just gonna ask you for whatever it is they want and sort of expect you to go along with it and then probably feed you some bullshit lines about like, real submissives are willing to do anything for their dominant or whatever. You know, they're just gonna make stuff up essentially. Or if they do ask, it's in a very like surface level way where they don't really seem to care about the answer. So for example, maybe, Maybe you are talking and you're you're talking about like, oh, I'm really, really into this, but like, I'm really not into gags, right? And then conveniently, like two days later, they ask you to do something with a gag. That could either be because one, they know it's a limit and they're trying to push your boundaries on purpose, which is like, no, do not do that. Or two, they don't care enough to remember and they're probably trying to keep track of like, 20 other submissives that they're messaging at the same time and they forgot that like gags was a limit for you because they don't care that much. So that is a really bad thing to do. It's just like, it's just, it shows a lack of care. It just shows how selfish the dynamic that they want really is and you do not have to tolerate that. The other way that this can go is basically the BDSM equivalent of like a Madonna whore complex, which is if somebody is like, really invested in like exactly how many people you've done BDSM with and they they want to only have like virginal <laughs> pure submissives that have never been tainted with the dominance of somebody else. Doing BDSM with anyone else at any other point in time doesn't make you less worthy. It doesn't make you dirty or bad or wrong. And it's a red flag for multiple reasons that somebody would be hyper focused on exactly what your experience level is. One is it's kind of 
fetishizing, frankly, to have somebody that only really cares about having pure virginal girls to like corrupt into doing BDSM, to be able to completely mold like clay into whatever their image is of submission as opposed to like, you know, mutually agreeing on what that might look like. The additional reason why it's concerning is because typically that means that they are purposely looking for people that they know they can manipulate better because of their lack of experience and typically also younger age. If they know that you are an 18 year old that's never done BDSM before and doesn't know what a safe word is, they are going to treat you very differently from somebody that's 30, has 10 years of experience in the scene and knows more about it than they do. They're trying to find people that they can manipulate more easily. They're trying to find people that are more pliable, that just don't know what they don't know yet. So be really cautious about that because, you know, the implications in either direction really aren't good. And, you know, I, I'm sure there's plenty of like monogamous doms, for example, that you, you know, have values that mean that they, they don't really want somebody that's done BDSM with a ton of other people, which like, I find icky, just, I just, I find it icky, you know, I'm gonna yuck somebody's yum here. I think it's gross if you're obsessed with your submissive's purity, okay? Let's not be in the Middle Ages here, we're a little bit more evolved than that, I think, okay? It's, it's fine if somebody has like, kissed or been tied up by other people before, it doesn't ruin the experience for you, or at least I hope it wouldn't. But, those are all of the ways that I could think of to try and suss out if somebody is a fake Dom. And I would love to know, do you have any advice, any things that you do to try and weed out the wheat from the chaff, I think as the saying goes, because this is what I could think of from my experience. I would love to know what you guys have done in the past that has worked for you. If you have had any like horrifically slash like terribly funny stories about dealing with a fake dom, I would love to hear from you all because like, oh man, even just going off of some people's profiles, we can tell they're like a fake dom. It's like, it's pretty wild, right? So I would love to know what you guys think about this. Any other comments, questions, anything else, you can go ahead and leave that down in the comment section below. And if you really like this, if you want to see more from me, please do subscribe for videos twice a week about all sorts of kink and BDSM or related subjects. And finally, if you really enjoyed this, if you want to support what I do, please go ahead and check me out over on Patreon. A link to that will be down in the description box below. That is what makes videos like this one possible. Videos like my videos on Army Hammer and Marilyn Manson, those really sort of extensive deep dives. I'm able to do because of Patreon. So if you want to help me keep that going, that would mean so, so much to me. And if you already support me there, thank you so, so much once again for everything that you do. It means the absolute world to me. And until I see you guys next time, I hope you have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.